The first step uh, in 2016 is to make the Olympic team. And then when we get to June, I'll make a decision about whether I feel like my stronger event is the 10,000 or the 5,000. Uh, and then the goal is to punch my ticket to Rio and, ho and hopefully it'll be in the event that I feel like I can do the best at at the Olympics. My goal is to each time compete to, to finish in the top three, which so it's just kind of continuing to simulate the idea of I have to finish on the podium. For example, when I ran the 10,000 here in Sacramento for the US Championships, um, I, I wanted to keep it as relaxed and controlled for four miles as I could. Um, but Amy Hastings, one of the competitors in the field, made a hard move at 5,000. So in that situation, I had to cover the move. Uh, Jordan Hesse also covered the move. And then I still waited. Once I'd covered that move, I still waited until when I felt like it was the appropriate time for me to start making a push for the win, which came later in the race. half so much quicker than the first half and that was sheer grit from the local lady and she will be one athlete who will send the crowd home very very happy this weekend having the norcal distance project it it brings together um, athletes with different strengths and weaknesses um, that we're all like-minded. We all have big goals that um, revolve around contending for spots on the Olympic team. Lauren Wallace is a lot faster than I am at hill sprints, so having someone that can get off the line much faster than me and that I get to chase, that challenge is making me a better athlete. You know, one of the things that we talk about is being able to bring some commitment and an attitude to the daily practice environment that is going to not only allow yourself to become better but to make those around you better. You know, Kim is no different from anybody in, in, in that approach. You know, Kim is very conscious of making sure she's giving her all every day, but at the same time, um, you know, she takes a lot away from teammates as well, so there's, it's a two-way street in that sense. I've learned so much from Kim over the past year, and like, she's really willing to share her experiences and everything with me, so I really enjoy that. Seeing how much work she puts in every day definitely sets the bar really high and you kind of want to rise to the challenge and not settle. The professionalism of the group is superb in terms of in everything that they do, they focused on the little details and they get them right and the, the team spirit which they have which is fantastic. I graduated from UC Davis in 2009. I'd never made it to NC Toys for track and field. That was really hard and disappointing, um, but it also left me feeling like I had a lot of unfinished business with the sport. I knew that the Olympic trials were three years away, and so I wanted to at least dedicate those three years to becoming the best athlete I possibly could and, and just give myself a shot at going to the Olympic trials and, and you know, being the best version of myself there. Over the three years, kind of coming out of college, building up to the Olympic trials, I continued to improve. I was just continually shaving time off my PR. When I graduated, my PR in the 5,000 was um, about a minute slower than the Olympic standard. In April, before the Olympic trials, um, I ran 1524, and the Olympic standard was 1520. So all of a sudden, I'd made this huge jump again, and I was only four seconds uh, away from having the Olympic standard. So that was the first time that I really started to see myself as a possible contender for the Olympic team. But the thing with the Olympic trials is you have to have the standard and finish in the top three in order to make the Olympic team. And so I went into the trials without the Olympic standard, which meant that I had to run that fast in the race. 
When the race started, I had to go to the front of the race to try to keep the pace as honest as possible to keep the standard within reach. And that's not really an ideal way to run a 5,000. It's, it's better to kind of sit in the pack and let other people do the work um, and try to finish hard. You don't like people drafting off you. But it was a risk I just felt like I had to take. I didn't do a great job of pacing at all. In fact, we got to 3,000 meters and I looked at the clock and realized that we were much slower than I'd envisioned. We were not really on pace to get the standard. And so I started to have a really weak moment um, and started to, to give up a little bit. And um, people started passing me. Julia Lucas made a really hard move that broke up the race with about 1,200 meters to go. And so I started fading back and I think I faded all the way back to eighth place. And then with a lap to go, I just suddenly, I heard Drew, my coach, yelling for me and I just realized all of a sudden that we'd, we'd worked too hard together and come too far and I had too many people supporting me to just kind of like give up in that moment. So I worked my way back into fifth place and then once I was there, I saw that Julia Lucas, who had made the really hard move, was fading really badly from that move and she was in third place. So with about 150 meters left, I lay everything I had out there onto the track and then just went like barreling down the home stretch and I could hear the roar of the crowd um, at Hayward Field and I knew that they saw what was unfolding. For whatever reason, somewhere deep in my subconscious, I knew to lean at the line like a sprinter. It's time desperately to hold on. One final surge. Oh, and it's Conley that gets that final spot. I ended up getting third place by 0.04 seconds and then it ended up being that we'd run so fast that we brought the pace back down and I was under the Olympic standard by 0.21 seconds and so in that tiny little fraction of a second I'd, I'd actually made the Olympic team. I went to London. I had hoped I could make the final but I wasn't really prepared to make the final. That was hard because after this huge high of making the Olympic team it kind of just ended all of a sudden. In a good way, it, it left me really motivated. I started to think about my career in terms of Olympic cycles, and I started to think about the entire next four years and how badly I wanted to make it to Rio and, and to get back to the Olympic stage as a better athlete that would be in the final and, and performing much better with the U.S. singlet on me. Having goals and big goals, especially with it being an Olympic year, I don't find it hard to stay motivated at all. I'm, I'm so excited about everything that's awaiting me this spring that, that pretty much every morning when my feet hit the floor, I'm ready to go. I can't wait to go to practice. And I have a great team in the NorCal Distance Project around me. And so I'm always excited to see my teammates. Um, and so kind of that coupled with the goals just makes me really excited to, to do what I do and, uh, and to get rolling for this spring. I love training and I love competing. Being able to kind of have this lifestyle and, and get to do what I love and earn a living in doing that, um, it's, it feels really like I'm living the dream. I try to think about all the people that have helped me get to that moment um, so that when the race gets tough, there's kind of a reason or reason beyond just myself to, to fight.